I just gotta go buy me a couple Cubans before we leave. Where would I go? They got them in the gift shop. I can buy Cubans here. Oh, yeah, because I'm allowed to take... Oh, I can't take none, but I can take two or three back. They sell Cubans here on the island, right? But they will rob me in here. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cause you want to get the Cuban when I buy the Cuban, I understand. The Jamaican, the Jamaican one, yeah, yeah. Uh, last time, well, yeah, I came back. I was married, so that was a while ago. And uh, clearing customs, I forgot I got two Cubans from over here. You know, and it was a—I shouldn't say he was a jerk customs agent, because he could have been a real jerk. He just said, "Throw him out," you know. And I was like, for real, man, I need two cigars. <laughs> Cut it out. But, um, yeah, I should be able to cut. Uh, I can get one or two. Maybe three. Even that's probably the only thing they're looking for now is Cuban cigars. <laughs> but you were saying people ring in. Yeah, buy like a case of them, right? If I go to Cuba, we can buy a box of cigars to Cuba for like 30, less than $50, $40 a month. If you go like in the ghetto, you might get it cheaper. You know what I'm saying? But when you, when you come back and you come to the airport, you got people waiting for you. They will to give you like 300 for that box you just spend $40 for. Waiting to give it to you. Waiting to give it to you. Everyone coming on, they said, anyone bring any cigars? Anyone, they asking you, they, 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 anyone bring they any barker. cigars? They got barkers out there. Who got it? Who got it? <laughs> they, they sell one for like $20. Yeah, one cigar, they sell for like $20. Like 25. if they sell it to And how much does that cigar cost you in Cuba? You buy a, you buy half a case for $20. Half a box. I have a box for $20. The global economy, man. The global economy. Historians will find some cops. In fact, we got a couple DE agents. I told you we're working with, shout out to GQ. Um, we got a retired narcotics officer who's with the team now. But some of our partners, like, again, everybody's, it's a, it's a game, right? Once they retire from the DEA, they don't have any, it, it was never personal. You know what I mean? It was their job. So they don't have no problem, like, um, Sutton and the lawyers too, you know. Um, I wish I knew, you know. I know you told me what one of your grandfather's former lawyer, his position is now. Yeah. And I wonder, because I'm sure he had a lot of lawyers, but I wonder if that was the lawyer I spoke to. Because after I get pulled off the plane, and we get, it all settles down, and um, I used to stay at a hotel right across the street from Bayside in Miami. Um, and his, your grandfather says, I need you to talk to my lawyer and explain to him exactly what happened. Because the great concern was that the whole situation had been compromised, that it wasn't a one-off and I just wrong place, wrong time, right? Or were we fucked? But yes, different world, different world, no facial recognition or any of that stuff back then. And so I'm like, so what What happened? He was like, so I was down there. My man was like, we back on. You down here. We can wait for you to send some people back down here to get it popping. Mm -hmm. Or you can go ahead and, you know, Pops that time was still a young man. He, you know, he's in his early 40s. He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, he was in the middle of it. He was getting it in. He was like, Lord, nah, we ain't got to wait. We can get it popping now. <laughs> I'd, I'll take two back with me now. Wow. And him and Mr. B, that started their run. Um, he eventually would start sending, uh, God rest his soul, cousin Tony, cousin, you know, um, uh, other family members whose names I won't say. Uh, shout out, cuz. <laughs> Hope she's doing well. No, she's doing well, in fact. Um, and then eventually, of course, that led to me going down to the islands because we used to, back in them days, we would just fly, Mr. we would either meet his people in Miami 
Okay. Go ahead, you got a question? Yeah, I do got a question. It was uh, at what point did Basil get uh, kidnapped? All right. So according to this newspaper article from the newspapers down there, um, the authorities spent one million one hundred thousand dollars in a three country chase because it seems that it seems Basil before he got sentenced was out on a five hundred thousand dollar bond that he skipped out on. Now again, family, this is five hundred thousand dollars in nineteen seventy four. Yeah. That is by all math, the same as walking away for five million. Five million now. The government had spent a hundred thousand dollars trying to track him down. Mm-hmm. Basically, they spent in today's money a million dollars trying to find him. They track him down in the U.S. Virgin Islands, um, and the legend goes that the agents put a Mickey in his drink. And next thing, when he wakes up, he's in Dade County in Miami Federal Court. As they often will do. And so he, he asked me to talk to his lawyer. And I don't know which one of his lawyers. And I wonder if it's the lawyer that now is politician. the politician. Yeah. I mean, good chick. Very, very possible. Very possible. Yeah, very possible that his your granddad's lawyer that I spoke to now is the big time politician. Oh, shout out to our homegirl, Michelle Moore, author of, co-author of Motown Mafia, Memoirs of a Kingpin's Kid. We are told that you went from pre-production to production, that you guys have actually started shooting uh, sloppy seconds. So shout out to you, shout out to Lisa Brown and the whole team over there. It's gonna be a hot new movie coming out on Tubi done by the good women here in Detroit. Um, Shout out to Tanja and the Shoe Lady. Uh, She's got Rotten and a few more titles on Tubi, so make sure you guys are supporting that whole Detroit movement, recreating Black Hollywood in the D. And um, we're looking forward to turning some of this stuff that we're doing down here, you know. You guys are gonna get the real story with these documentaries. Then we're gonna give you the Hollywood versions and do some scripted stuff also on it so um yeah but shout out to the home girl michelle congratulations on that yeah big up really looking forward to it hopefully we get back in states before you guys are done shooting and um get to see a little something get to see a little something so all good oh all yeah good. yeah, yeah right. we got a whole yeah and they, they they uh team in detroit of people starting to make their own movies yeah That's Basil, what I'm saying. the timing is perfect basil was telling me that they didn't uh didn't really watch to be down here but I was telling him, it's the hottest thing right now. Don't worry, you will. You will soon. You want to fly a stick now? I don't want to fly a stick. You look on the fly a stick. You do see it? It's on. Yeah, it's there. Oh, yeah, you should check it out. Hold on. He's telling me it's free, though. I didn't know it was free. Trust me, when we get the analytics, after this come out and we look at the analytics from the islands and the Caribbean, oh, they'll be watching Tubi. Yeah, they'll be watching Tubi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no question about it. And then with Al doing his stuff on the, uh, it's the cocaine condor, no. The cocaine condor. The Ronald Reagan era. Which is the same thing that his brother-in-law was telling us to watch that Wings of Men. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, on Amazon. Look that up. Mm-hmm. On the wings of men. On the wings of men. I gotta check that out. Because when his brother-in-law, when his uncle was speaking about that whole Reagan, and he was, you know, you, when you've been around and you listen, you hear some similar things. Like, so when he said about the Russians was controlling the drug trade in El Salvador and Nicaragua, then the Americans move in, they take it over, right? which is the same thing when you talk to our people in Pakistan when the Russians invaded Afghanistan. And this is where the squares, the, half the reason they invaded Afghanistan was to take over the opium poppy business. Half the reason why we went to Afghanistan, the U.S., was to take over, you know, the bullshit war on terror. Nah. 
they replaced China and Southeast Asia, Afghanistan. As soon as the Americans invaded Afghanistan, Afghanistan replaces Southeast Asia as the number one source production of opium and heroin coming into a Europe and America. Right? Americans run the Russians out of Nicaragua and El Salvador. Next thing you know, you got Iran Contra. But what I'm suspecting when I connect the dots. So we like know that the Bush and Reagan administration was getting the drugs out of South America, funneling them to guys like Rick Ross, Freeway Ricky in California. This is all documented now. And they were, of course, via through Noriega doing the banking, using Panama as a layover spot. But it seems they also had some distribution arms going across the Gulf through the Caribbean. Which would make sense because it's the government. Why would the government only have one distribution arm? And they got all the shit. Yeah, you have to really start to, you know, listen and connect the dots. And it's like, so why is he talking about Nicaragua and El Salvador? I'd never heard that piece, but he's talking about it because of what the government was doing. He knows what he didn't get to go. He knows how those dots were really getting connected. But we do know, you know, everybody knew in Haiti that Haiti was like the Bahamas back in the 80s. And today, and today, mm -hmm. which is why people want to keep those countries in chaos. So you have to keep the country in chaos so you can do what the fuck you want to do. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and then everybody gets to say, nobody knows, people in America can say, we don't know what's going on down there. You are the reason why it's going on down there. <laughs> but it's what they call a plausible deniability. Countries in chaos, no real government. Then something go wrong, they blame it on the general or the politician. As you said, the prime minister here said years ago, if the biggest country in the world can't stop it, why are you talking to me running this little country, telling me to stop it? You can't stop it. DEA, FBI, CIA, NSA. Alphabet boys. Alpha, you got all the alphabet boys, and you can't stop it. Then you come down here to little old me. Hey, cut it out. You tell them to stop it. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, not to go into that part of the story, when I got, when the DEA pulled me off the plane, and I'm talking to uh, Basil's lawyer down in Miami, and right. he, he's debriefing me about what just happened. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, you only had $80,000. Usually when Mr. Miller's friends call me, I have to bail them out from Dade County. But 80000 nah, they said, Miami International, this is, again, truly in the heart of the Miami Vice era. Um, but, yeah, that's how that's how they, that's what that okay. kidnapping was about. They, they gotcha. he's So, and now with that article, they able to connect the dots. So, he's on the run. Mm -hmm. He's bouncing all around the Caribbean, attempting to, af to avoid the authorities right the authorities have thrown a hundred thousand dollars of money at catching him back then okay they catch up to him in the u.s virgin islands hit him with a hit him with a mickey uh-huh and when he wakes up he's in miami worst of all you tell me to stop it and it's your alphabet boys who are orchestrating it but there's a um documentary that our partner al prophet did called um white powder, black power, white powder. And he traces that all of this stuff, you know, that the U.S. government's policy has always been, we prefer cocaine over communism. First, first and foremost, if it's the choice between doing business with a government that's involved in narco trafficking or doing business with a communist country, the communists gotta go. We can deal with the narco trafficking because the interest of the American corporate business, the, the traffickers are capitalists. They can work with capitalists. 
What they can't do is work with socialists and communists, right? In fact, the narco-traffickers, when they go to clean up their narco-monies, they got to come back right around to us and deal with us. It's the part that they don't... It's the stuff they should be teaching the kids, the real world, in elementary school, but they can't teach it. Because I've discovered this doing this work, people need to believe there's a good guy and a bad guy. Always got to be a boogeyman. The truth is there is no good guy and there is no bad guy. They're just guys. And one day you're the good guy, then you're the bad guy. One day you're the bad guy, then you're the good guy. Still the, same. Still the guy. Same guy. Same guy. Oliver North is a patriot and a hero to some. Others call him a narco trafficker or an arms dealer. Used to be, this island was full of Indians. Indian tribes, right? When Columbus got here. Ain't too many Indians left no more around here, right? The, the native tribes that were here when... Yeah, the Arawak Indians. The Arawaks, right. Where the Arawaks at now? That's Arawaki. <laughs> Is that why it's called that? Yeah. It's named after the Indians. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Christopher Columbus came in. He started raping the women and killing all, all the men. Right. Yeah, that, that, that's real history. Rape the women, kill the men. Which is what the Vikings used to say. Kill all the men, take the women. <laughs> but people of our color don't understand that part of history. The conqueror does what the conqueror wants to do. That's why other people are so serious about not being conquered and will move heaven and earth. To, to stop them from being in that position. Because they understand what happens. It's deep. It's very deep. And if you don't know the history, if you don't read books, if you don't read, which is the scary thing about this world now, where people don't read books, they don't know the history. They only know yesterday, barely. They, you know, they know as much history as on their Facebook timeline. Anything older than their Facebook timeline, they don't know what happened. They say you know, you hide something from a black man, put it in the book. Right? So we're talking here in the Bahamas. When I was a kid, I was here when the queen came to give independence. Most of the activities of your grandfather's early career, this wasn't even his own country. It was a colony of England. So you think this could have been going on down here as a colony and them not know what was going on? They, we did a, we used to do radio podcasts. You know the biggest drug selling family in the world's history? The British royal family. The Opium Wars. They is took over. I mean, this is history. They took over India. The British took over India. They start growing the poppy. They start growing the poppy in India, and then they sold all the poppies in China in the opium dens. When the Chinese said, "You're turning our whole country into dope fiends. We don't want any more opium in here," the British said, "Are you fucking crazy? You know how much money we make from this?" The Chinese got mad. It was what they call the Boxer Rebellion. The British sent in their gunboats and forced the Chinese at gunpoint to, to buy it. Buy it. That's how they took Hong Kong. That's why they took Hong Kong. Yeah, this is like, but it's in the books. It's not like a hidden a conspiracy theory. It's right there in the books. They, but they won't tell, they'll say the Opium Wars. But they don't say what the Opium Wars were. They won't say Opium Wars, yeah. Well, that's when the royal family was selling opium in here, in, in, in China, and the Chinese didn't want to buy the opium, and they came with their army and navy and said, no, you're going to keep buying mm. our opium. Mm -hmm. Then, fast forward 100 years later, they tell the black man, 
You bad. Don't sell no opium. Don't sell no heroin. Don't sell no poppy. That's bad. It paid for Buckingham Palace. It paid for the crown jewels. It expanded your empire all over the world. Then you tell some bo some brother in Haiti or the Bahamas or some brother in the Dominican Republic, don't do that. Don't do that. That's bad. You damaging society. But the public can't handle the truth. It's true. I, I, I've, you know, I got, I've got to the point at my age. I really understand it. The average man and woman just want to live their simple life, man. They just want to go to work, feed their family, drink their beer, watch the baseball. They don't want to deal with all the. If they got to really think about that, my government is involved in narcotics and drugs, and that the police are just. You know that the FBI and DEA are involved. It's too much, man. It's just too much for them. People need it. it yeah. They trying to get out of whatever they got going. On. They worrying about paying. Put, the car's on empty. The guy's trying to put some gas in his car, and then you start telling him about international drug trafficking and the bankers are the real dope dealers. Oh man, come on. I can't deal with it. When you tell me that your banker. Then guess what? The dope they sell them here in the Bahamas ends up is the reason why your bank has that ATM machine. Because guess what? Guess where that drug money ends up? In your bank. And then some big European or American company takes out a loan to build a hotel. Where'd the bank get the money from to fund this hotel? From the dope... But then, this is where it gets mentally hard. Because then the lady, the guy working at the hotel, when they look at their paycheck, says, this is dope money. That's too much for people to deal with, man. Because if they gotta comprehend that their paycheck, you in the dope game. Every time you cash your paycheck, you cash in dope money. Oh man, our people can't deal with all that. They can't deal with that. They need, you bought a Mercedes, you're bad, you sold dope. I'm innocent, I'm nice, I'm square. No, you're involved in it just like every... Yeah, yeah. Oh, your, your uncle the other day, I will share this. Like, you guys start making t-shirts, I'm gonna come after you. He said, down here in the islands, we got a philosophy. We don't take losses, we take lives. <laughs> I'd have been like, oh, I could have fucked with you back in the day. <laughs> hey, 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 old school was like, yes. yeah, baby, we don't take losses. Yes. We take lives this way. Um, yeah. But it is the good, it's the goodness and grace of God for us all to be on this side of the situation um, and be in a position to bring some perspective and history to the events of people like your grandfather and my father and what we know now, I mean, we'll get into it. I mean, his grandfather's situation goes all the way up to like the Nixon administration, Henry Kissinger. I mean, just over the top kind of stuff. Not to mention the dignitaries that he himself was involved with. Oh, I told you when I would come down here, man, in the 80s uh, for, to come see his father, man. They could have named the airport Basil Miller International. Everybody at the airport worked for him. He had more people on his payroll at the airport than the airport people had on their payroll. <laughs> no, it, it was um, it was a different time. And again, this ain't Hollywood. Um, this is not a Hollywood fictional character of this black guy with all this power and all this connection. This, this man, life and times, was truly that. And, um, you know, so like with all of these great hustler stories or big fella stories, you know, there's a lot of heartbreak, there's a lot of tragedy, there's a lot of over the top living, you know, because the real, you know, don't, don't none of this come, we do all did a lot of laughing, but you're going to do a lot of crying in this life too. You better know that. Got to know that. He visited his grandfather in prison you know I've visited my grand my father in too many prisons 
You know, the first time I visited Pop Locked Up, I was probably 12 years old, and I found myself in my 40s. A whole different case of the situation, visit him again. I visited him in Atlanta, Federal Penitentiary. I visited him in Butner, North Carolina. I visited him in Milan too many times. That's the local fair joint, so he was always <laughs> in Milan too many times. And then a bunch of county jails and all the shit you go through with being transferred. You know, and that'd be the part they don't always show. That, you know, the reality of it. That none of this, it ain't just the cars, the women, the travel. There's some real people. There's wives and kids and grandkids and aunties and uncles involved in this. And they get to enjoy the rise to the top and the, and the view from the top. But they also got to, they live with you through the bad part too. You know, but that that's why, again, it's good that um, and we thank the Lord in heaven that finally the people who did it, we can tell our own stories, we can distribute it, interact with you guys out there um, directly. And um, and on that, I don't know if you guys got the news down here. You guys have BET down here, right? Yeah. And you guys obviously know who Tyler Perry is, right? Yeah. Well, Tyler Perry, the, the last news out of the States was that uh, Tyler Perry will be purchasing BET and VH1. So there will be a black man back owning BET. So for all you people who bashed Bob Johnson when he sold to the white folks at Viacom, see, you gotta have a little patience. Now a black man buy it back. You see what I'm saying? And now, and, and salute to Tyler Perry on that because that's what it's going to take. So now, again, when there's people who from our culture who are finally in position, then we ain't got to keep crying about they don't show the reality of us. They don't show our role models. We don't have to. We don't have to. Uh, we don't have to do that because because it's us. That's all. And um, and on that, he'll be taking over BET, which means he'll be taking B over BET Plus, which is um, that that docu-series called Trap Queens. We just were with Big 50, who's yeah. got an episode. Shout out to Big 50, we'll be having her for real, for real on the pod. We were just with her at uh, uh, Hustle and Grind, uh, Book Fair, and Movie Auditions. Yeah, it's a show on BET called Trap Queens. It kind of chronicles a lot of the women involved in our lifestyle. Um, and shout out to Judge Mathis and his people were involved with that and I believe they've got something coming up with uh, Southwest T, at least rumor Southwest T's woman and Vivica Fox and um, so it's a lot It's a lot happening out there again guys, it's, it's our turn to shine and um, we're just happy about it so you're going to be seeing a lot of these guys again we thought it would be only one time but we're going to have to come back down here to the islands and do some more work we got two producers on the ground now to help us get <laughs> to help us get this project done. Um, so again, while we're here, we got uh, Al Prophet is down in Miami putting it together. Um, we got some other heavyweights that are gonna be participating yeah. in this project. So, um, yeah, you know, like fine wine, some things take a little time before they can be what they wanna be, but it all happened in divine order because had we started with part two, three or four years ago, then it would have been before you see what I'm saying. Yeah. So, uh, as always, God know best. You know, things happen for a reason. I be having my plan, but you know, that be nothing, because God got his own plan, you know, so it, these things happen in divine order. So, um, it's a beautiful thing, man. So, this is episode 64, special edition, live Nassau, Bahamas. Dwight Smith, newest producer, Big Boss Filmworks. Basil Miller III, newest producer, Big Boss Filmworks, Big Lou Stevens, running this point as always. Once again, guys, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Make sure you guys are following us on social media. Obviously, we'll be doing updates on the progress of Motown Mafia Part 2, Motown Mafia Reloaded ASAP. Um, make sure, again, you hit that like, share, and subscribe button. 
We got shorts now. We got reels. Yeah. How's that working? Tell them a little about that. Yeah, if you if you like, take a look. Shorts will be available like every other day or so. We'll be putting together some shorts, some special content, extra content. And check us out on Spotify. I'll be posting full episodes of the Motown Mafia podcast. And when they're new, it'll be out before it hits YouTube. Beautiful. We love you guys. And again, Big Boss Filmworks doing a Motown Mafia podcast production live. Marriott, Poolside, Nassau, Bahamas. Holla at your man. And that's how we do it. <laughs>